Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show, I'm your host Paul, and this video we're breaking down the boys spin-off series Gen V. The first look has a lot of references to the show, including nods to Homelander, an appearance by A-Train and Ashley, along with a puppet of the deep. In this video, we're gonna be going in deep, eh, and talking about the show, the new characters, and things that we think will be happening in the series. Gen V is basically gonna be an X-Men parody, with several teenage kids being trained as superheroes in order to become the next big soups. The title Gen V is of course a play on Gen Z, Vought, and also Chemical V. However, I actually think there might be a deeper cut to it that links back to the X-Men. Back in 1996, there was a live action X-Men show released called Generation X that got shown on Channel 5 in the UK. I had my tape all set up to record it, and the next day realised I'd set the wrong time, so I never got to see it. Stuck with me though, and has finally paid off by appearing in this video. Thank God! Welcome to Godolkin University. It's a safe space for you to thrive. Now this opening instantly sets up where the show will be taking place. That is, Godolkin University, and fans of the comics will instantly recognise the name. John Godolkin was the leader of the G-Men, and he was a sort of Professor X type figure that pulled together lots of soups to form the group. He had his own mansion out in the countryside, and similar to Xavier, this school for gifted youngsters trained several of them. I think that's likely what's going to be going on here, with us potentially even meeting the character at some point in the series. Godolkin has a darker side to him, and in the comics we learn that he was abusing the students. Huey infiltrated the group disguised as the soups, and he slowly started to unearth the seedier side to it, which is also something that Vought became aware of. In the end, Godolkin went to set his students on the boys, but soldiers from Vought arrived, and they wiped them out along with Godolkin. They'd become aware of what he was doing, and didn't want the PR disaster that was bound to come from this getting out. Now the comic was written way before the Me Too movement, and it is possible that it could be tied in with that, or they might just not show Godolkin at all. If he is in the series, I can see him possibly being played by Clancy Brown, however, he may be someone who worked with Ford and unearthed the truth. He does look a bit dishevelled, he, he's pulling a gun on someone as if he's being very suspicious on who they are, and he might not be Godolkin, but if, if they have cast him, then yeah, that's going to be who it is. Now the teaser opens with a school of crime fighting, and to the left of the entrance we can see a statue for Lamplighter. Lamplighter was replaced by Starlight in Season 1, and we were told that he had retired. However, he'd actually been shipped off to the Sage Grove Centre, which is where he was freed in Season 2. Lamplighter ended his own life by setting himself on fire in Vought Tower, but the fact that the statue is here makes me think that it was hidden from the public. Vought have a habit of covering up the deaths of their soups, and they used to run cover stories to hide what really happened with them. The statue for him being here hints that it's all been swept under the rug, and Lamplighter's reputation hasn't gone down in flames, eh? Now this then transitions into Marie Moreau, looking about one for Homelander. When we last saw him, he was about to start his Kanye Dolph Hitler rock, and he'd murdered someone at a rally to rapturous applause. He is still Vought's number one moneymaker though, with a very loyal following, so the company probably hasn't got rid of him yet. However, there is also the potential that this could be a prequel to the show, and that takes us into Now we're unsure of when the series is taking place, as there are some things in this that hint it could be a prequel, or something that's happening alongside Season 3. There's a nod to Black Noir, and though he died in Season 3, we do know the mantle will be taken up by someone else. Due to him wearing a mask, his murder could go undetected, and this school might actually end up setting up a training program that selects who the next one's gonna be. Big theory time. There, yeah, but th there are ways around this. Now the Deep Puppet is Girls Out 2, which was only brought into the public once the show had started, so I am thinking it takes place either as season 3 is unfolding, or just after it. Marie Moreau unfortunately isn't from the comics either, so we can't even really use her to judge whenabouts it's happening. However, she has showed up in the series before, with us actually getting a picture of her in the Red River Files. When investigating Victoria Newman, Huey and Starlight came across a list of Red River students, and slap bang in the middle was Marie M. Really nice touch placing their main character in season 3, and as I've been saying, it's all connected. Now later on in the teaser we see Marie standing in a room, and to the left and right of her are signs for the location. There's blood lining the walls, and potentially we'll be seeing her training her powers here. According to the wiki, Marie has powers which are very, very loosely based around Wolverine. Now she possesses vein and arteries manipulation, which means that she can fire them out of her wrists, allowing them to latch onto people. But Kevin, how is that like Wolverine? 
Well, Timmy, Marie has a regenerative healing factor and her wrists are turn open when she's using her abilities. When her veins go back in, the wrists heal themselves, similar to how Wolverine's claws retract. I'm guessing that this also stops people from just cutting her veins and killing her pretty easily. I actually think she might try and end her own life in the show, as we see her pulling out a pocket knife after the Red River shot. Again, on the floor, we can see a sign for Red River. It looks like we're going to be exploring this location very, very in depth. It popped up in the boys' diabolical, and it was a horrendous place where people got experimented on in order to improve their powers. We cruise the corridors of the school, and to the left hand side, we can see a vending machine selling A Train's Turbo Rush. After this, we go to the words Murderer, which are written in blood. Blood appears throughout the teaser, and it's a motif that pops up at several different points. Blood. 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 And bits of sick. Obviously, Marie has powers that link in with her blood, and I'm guessing that she becomes a suspect in the murders that we see playing out. I even have a theory that someone might have similar powers to Victoria Newman, and they could be ripping people apart. In the next shot, we see someone's eyes opening widely, with them looking extremely bloodshot. This could either be a victim, or the killer themselves starting up their powers. Cut to the SWAT team going through a school, again symbolising that these have to be pretty high level crimes. We then jump to a picture of a cartoon bunny rabbit, somewhat echoing the visions that Black Noir used to have. A SWAT team member also patrols the corridor, hinting at how this might be an ongoing thing as more murders happen. The Black SWAT team members are hammered home by the Black Noir sign, which says no lucky lose, and then this area is patrolled by security. We then see a shot of someone crying and blood running into a drain. From here we get Adam Burke, the director of Dawn of the Seven. What, what, what do you mean it was really Tony Gilroy? Now he also does a chef's kiss gesture, and also had a bit of a thing with Ashley, who too appears later on in the trailer. From here we get an upside down shot of a girl in her dorm room, standing in the middle of the room. The way this pans around, and how she looks at the camera, makes me think that this might be the person carrying out the murders, who's just found their next victim. She looks shocked to see whatever this is, and yeah, that's what I'm going with. I keep mentioning the serial killer theme, it's not being confirmed yet might not be part of the show, and if you think there's something else going on, then let me know, because I'm going fully down the rabbit hole on this. I'll stop with that now, as it is getting in the way, and in what's a nice little easter egg, we can see a Queen Maeve poster hanging up on the wall. We then get some quick shots of some characters that I'm unsure of who exactly they are, before we see A-Train in the flesh. He's rocking a cap for the Seven, is wearing a suit, and is also clearly about to give a speech. I think he might potentially be opening a new wing of the school, or doing something along those lines that requires his appearance. Nice detail on the mic is that we can see the news network VSN is covering it, which is obviously owned by Vought. Though I'm saying this is a school, it could also possibly be happening at Vought Tower, as we can see windows behind him that have those crisscrossing diagonal lines on them. This is similar to what they have in the tower, so potentially this scene comes from there. It could even be the moment where they announce the new seven members, as their numbers were whittled down massively after the events of Season 3. It's also possible that this is a flashback in which we see A-Train getting drafted into the group. It sort of has an NFL style to it, and this might be used as promotional material at the school to show, look kids, look what you can become if you get into the 7. You, you, you can hate your life, just like A-Train does. Look what you can become. Now after the shot of Clancy Brown, we get several different scenes that are clearly at a medical facility. You can tell by the tiled walls and infrastructure that this is somewhere else where it seems like they're carrying out experiments. We see blood and guts being swept up with a character covered in blood similar to Victoria. Back, back to the murder theory, yeah, I said I wouldn't do, but potentially this could be someone carrying out their powers which are similar to Vic's, and this is why there's blood and guts everywhere. They clearly weren't harmed as they're covered in it, and it could be a splashback from their victim. Now there's also a character being carried along a hallway, and I have seen people saying that because they're wearing the blue patient clothing, that this could be the Sage Grove Center. However, I actually just think this is Red River, and that we'll be focused on learning the backstory of that, rather than it being Sage. So I'm taking your theory time, I'm bringing back the murder one, and I'm telling you to put yours in the f***ing bin and f*** off, go f*** yourself. Now amongst these moments we get a montage of students, along with my man Ambrose from Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Marie is played by Jazz Sinclair, who too showed up in that series, so a high school reunion. Now there's kids sliding along a hallway, and you might notice some snow to the left and right. I'm guessing that this is an Iceman type character, and he's also holding a beer. Iceman and X2 chilled Wolverine's beer, so it could be a nod to that. 
He was also played by Sean Ashmore, who played Lamplighter, and I, you have to admit, it, it is all connected. Now there's some pancakes with a smiley face on them, showing Pancake Man. You're shaking your head now, but wait till we get to the puppet theory. Now we then have Marie shooting veins out of her hands, and this happens in a kitchen that we later see get smashed up. Guessing that the person she grabbed was attacking the family we see here, and she stepped in in order to take them out. It's possible that his powers were maturing, and he decided to kill his family, or they just let rip. The Red River episode in Diabolical had the students going back to their parents to murder them for what they'd done, and it could be a similar thing happening here. The kitchen has a number of fights in it that pop up in the trailer, so expect to see this as one of the big action scenes. We then see Chan's Padermo busting out his powers, and by the looks of it, the character's telekinetic. There's also Marie being chased along the corridor, some of the kids showing off their abilities, and an Ant-Man type character getting trapped under a plastic cup. Better than what they did in Season 3, I tell you, I still haven't got that out of my brain. And we also see someone trapped in what I think is Red River, before we cut to Marie being interviewed. This is clearly promoting the university, and it's another part of Vought PR that makes them seem like heroes instead of what they are. We can catch a Homelander statue here as well, showing how the character looks over everything. This then leads into a lot of blood shots, and what people have assumed is the deep puppet popping up again. This puppet also gets its head ripped off at one point, and we see deep on the Sesame Street parody called Avenue B, like for Vought. Now if you look at the puppet here, it has stubble, whereas later on the graffiti corridor one doesn't. Due to it also getting its head ripped off and there being a spine, I actually believe this is an actual person rather than being a puppet. If we look at the head ripping scene, this puppet is actually grabbed by another puppet that rips this puppet's skull off from its body. Therefore, there might be several puppet characters that are vying it out for the top spot, and I'd love it if the deep puppet was just as toxic as he is. Puppets also work as a metaphor, as all of the students in staff of V are of course puppets for the organisation. Really nice thing you might not catch, and that ends the teaser. We, we went out on a high note there, let's be fair. Now, I, I, I can't wait for the show, and yeah, this trailer was kind of a sleeper hit over the weekend, but it's really got me interested to see what's coming down the line. I'm really sorry it's taken this long to get to it, but I hope you enjoyed the breakdown, and obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. We're running a competition right now and giving away three copies of House of the Dragon Season 1 on the 15th of December, and all you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the teaser. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want some else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the Transformers trailer, which will be linked on screen right now. Lots of cool little easter eggs and plot details in that, and definitely head over there right after this. By the way, thanks for sitting through the video, I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.